today's lesson, you're learning English with Doctor Strange. No, actually the actor who plays Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch. So we've selected a scene from the latest Spider-Man movie and a short interview with him. But before we start, every week we release lessons to help intermediate and advanced learners just like you to improve your English in a fun and dynamic way without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Charlie, whose English level has skyrocketed thanks to our videos. Charlie has also had a breakthrough after watching our videos. So if you're new here, make sure that you join our community of over 5 million learners by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below now. The entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, including me. Everyone? Uh, can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works, and it's very difficult and dangerous to change it mid-casting. So my girlfriend's just gonna forget about everything we've been through? I mean, is she even gonna be my girlfriend? That depends. Was she your girlfriend just because you're Spider-Man, or...? I mean, I don't know. I really hope not. All right, fine. <laughs> Everyone in the world's gonna forget that you're Spider-Man, except your girlfriend. Thank you so much. That Oh my god, Ned. Ned! What is a Ned? He's my best friend, so it's really important to me that Ned knows. Okay. Let's not change the parameters of this spell anymore while I'm casting Okay, I'm done, it. I'm done. I, I swear I'm done, I'm done. Nah, but my Aunt May should really know. Peter, stop tampering with the spell. When she found out that I was Spider-Man, it was, it was really messy, and I, I don't think that I could go through with that again. Our world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Another way to say the entire world is the whole world. The word entire refers to the whole of something or something in its totality. Hey man, did you see Brad and MJ on the plane? They were watching movies and laughing the entire time. Dude, don't worry. Uh, can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works. In this context, spell refers to spoken words or rituals that have magical power. It's very common to see this word being used in fantasy stories or fairy tales, because they usually feature wizards, witches, and other magical creatures. Sunshine, daisies, butter, mellow, turn this stupid fat rat yellow. Are you sure that's a real spell? Well, it's not very good, is it? Very difficult and dangerous to change it mid-casting. A common verb that goes with spell is to cast. To cast a spell means to perform a spell. In the scene, when Doctor Strange says mid-casting, he means that it's very difficult and dangerous to change a spell while he is in the process of casting it. Mid is short for middle. Whenever we add mid to a word, we refer to something that is in the middle or the half of something. Here are some examples. I was born in the mid-80s. I was born in the middle of the 80s decade around 1984 to 1986. He is in his mid-30s. He's probably around 34 to 36 years old. The cool thing is that we also have the words early and late that can be used similarly. Check it out. Early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s, early 30s, mid 30s, late 30s. Pretty cool, huh? Notice that you can also use these words for dates and holidays. For example, an early Christmas means that Christmas will happen before the usual time in December. Tony. Obi, what are you doing up? I couldn't sleep till I found out how it went. How'd it go? Went great. Looks like it's gonna be an early Christmas. Oh my god, Ned. Ned! What is a Ned? This is a funny moment. Peter is talking about his friend, Ned. Doctor Strange, however, doesn't know who or what Ned is. So he speaks as if Ned was a thing, not a person. That's why he asks, what's a Ned? Instead of, who is Ned? I'm done. I'm done. I, I swear I'm done. I'm done. In this context, to swear means to promise. If you say, I swear to someone, you emphasize that what you're saying is true. However, to swear also has another meaning, to use offensive language or bad words. Duck! Mm. <laughs> I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the way that you express yourself. Oh, is it the swearing? I mean, is it the constant swearing? Because I gotta tell you, if it is, well, you can just kiss my ass, huh? <laughs> No, no, it, it's not about the swearing. So it can be a huge challenge when learning a language to figure out which words and expressions are actually important and which ones you will never need. Without the guidance of a good teacher, 
you may waste a lot of time learning the wrong ones. But don't worry, because in our Fluent with Friends course, you can learn the words and expressions that natives actually use every single day. And you'll have a ton of fun doing it with the TV series Friends, which various academic studies show is the best show out there to learn English with. So in this course, you will also learn how natives reduce, cut, and connect the sounds, which is the secret to understanding us no matter how fast we speak. Plus, you will get to laugh at all the jokes. You can give it a try right now for free with our three parts masterclass. What are you waiting for? Just click up here or down the description below to sign up now. Ah, but my Aunt May should really know. Peter, stop tampering with the spell. To tamper means to interfere with something by making changes that shouldn't be made. Usually something you don't know exactly how it works. I need an answer now. I think I deserve it. I'm sorry, Ed, then the answer is no. Tampering with people's brain waves, mind manipulation, it just raises too many questions. Sorry. Notice that Dr. Strange says, stop tampering. This is a good example of a gerund being used. It's common to use a verb in the ing form after the verb stop. For example, stop eating, stop drinking. However, it is also possible to say, stop to eat, stop to drink. But now the meaning changes. Here's a little test for you. What's the difference between these two sentences? She stopped eating, she stopped to eat. In the first example, she was already performing the action, eating, and then decided to stop, probably because she was full. In the second example, she was doing something else, maybe working or going home, when she decided to stop what she was doing in order to eat something. Interesting, isn't it? When she found out that I was Spider-Man, it was, it was really messy. When you find out about something, you discover or learn the truth about it. Not that I haven't enjoyed our little rating parties, but no, but this, this brings it to a close. As soon as we find out what else this has been used for. Peter's saying that when his aunt learned about his secret, that he is Spider-Man, the situation was really messy. Messy in this context means challenging, difficult, or confusing. Stark is, is in complete disarray. Do you understand no, that? No, our stocks have never been higher. Yes, you from a managerial standpoint. For, well, if it's messy, Let then me let's double back. Let's... I don't think that I can go through with that again. In this context, the phrase to go through something means to experience something, especially something unpleasant or difficult. So I brought him into our home because, because I can't go through that again. I can't lose another one. So the, the Avengers, this is your first time in one of these movies, right? In a big collective movie like yes. this, yeah, the big ensemble. And how was it for you? It was weird. I mean, fantastic, daunting. You know, my first day on set was with two icons, with Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr., and that's kind of unnerving, mm -hmm. especially because this character has to sort of stand, you know, beard to beard with another egotistical narcissist in the MCU, <laughs> and uh, I, I have a similar status in the story. So that was a, a weird thing to pull out of a hat on the first day on set with Robert, but he's... He's fantastic, as you know, and Did very, you know very, anything about... Thrilled. They're so secretive, though. Did you know anything about the script? I did, as has been much talked about, and uh, I think, you know, yeah, it's slightly... It's in, it invoked a bit of jealousy. I did read the script, yeah, I did. How is that possible? You're, this is your first... I just took no the one pages else got a script. and... I don't have glasses yet, but I just cast no, my eyes No, how did you do them. that? Um, I, read, I read words. In a big collective movie like yes. this, yeah, the big ensemble. This word is commonly used to refer to musicians who perform together. But in this case, Benedict is referring to all the Marvel superheroes working together in the same movie. Ensemble is a group of people or things acting together as a whole. And how was it for you? It was weird. I mean, fantastic, daunting. When something is daunting, it is amazing and incredible, challenging and hard to do, strange and different. This is an advanced word that I recommend you add to your vocabulary notebook. You may find it useful. I thought about leaving once. But you know, it's daunting. 
Why entertain the prospect of failure? You know, my first day on set was with two icons, with Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr., and that's kind of unnerving. Mm -hmm. If something is unnerving, it makes you feel less confident and slightly frightened. Many learners might find it unnerving to do an interview or give a presentation in English. That's why you should practice and gain more confidence by speaking English as much as possible. For example, on the Real Life English app. Like suddenly really liking something that you never thought you could ever like. Ever. <laughs> so nerving. I think you can expect just about anything right now. People have done some wild things after having a heart attack. Especially because this character has to sort of stand, you know, beard to beard with another egotistical narcissist in the MCU. When Benedict says that he had to stand beard to beard with another Marvel character, he means that his character, Doctor Strange, and Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Iron Man, had to work in the same movie together almost in a competitive way, since both are main characters. A similar expression is to be neck and neck. When two competitors are neck and neck, they are at the same level and have an equal chance of winning. This expression comes from horse racing. Now the expression is used to describe any close competition, from car races to elections to track racing. We're a few weeks out from the election and it's neck and neck. If it gives Dalton a spike in the polls, Russell will not hesitate to gut me. Especially because this character has to sort of stand, you know, beard to beard with another egotistical narcissist in the MCU. If you are egotistical, you think only about yourself and consider yourself to be better or more important than other people. This is a disapproving term. Young lady, if you think I don't know what it's like to live with a stubborn, egotistical man, then you're wrong. Because that was my husband. Similarly, if you are a narcissist, you have too much admiration for yourself and you are too self-centered. This comes from the mythical story of a young handsome man named Narcissus. In the story, Narcissus is cursed by the gods and falls in love with his own reflection in a pool of water and eventually dies. I know you're lying about believing in me, but I promise once we've reached our destination, you'll know that everything I told you is true. Of course you believe that. You're a classic narcissist. MCU stands for Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's the term used to refer to all the Marvel movies ever made, which are based on Marvel Comics and produced by Marvel Studios. And uh, I have a similar status in the story. Notice how Benedict pronounces the word status. He pronounces it status. This way of pronouncing this word is more common in British English. In American English, this word is usually pronounced status. Listen again. I have a similar status in the story, so that was a, a weird thing to pull out of a hat on the first day on set with Robert. The expression to pull something out of a hat means to produce something suddenly and surprisingly, just like a magician who pulls a rabbit out of a hat, for example. You came in here knowing what you had to do, hoping I would pull a rabbit out of a hat so you wouldn't have to. I know the girl. I know her mother. These people don't deserve this. Did you know anything about, they're so secretive though. Ellen is referring to the writers and producers of the Marvel films and how nobody knows what is going to happen in the movies until their release. A secretive person hides their feelings, thoughts, and intentions from other people. All right, let's go through the squad one by one. Rose is very secretive. I don't know anything about her personal life. It's in, it invoked a bit of jealousy. To invoke means to make someone have a particular feeling about something. It also means to call for help, usually from a god or a powerful being. What about Thor? Off world. Okay, um, Doctor Strange. Unavailable. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. Benedict is saying that his fellow actors felt jealous about the fact that he was able to read the script while nobody else could. Jealousy is the noun form of jealous, which means to want what other people have. In other words, to envy. Are you jealous of me? What? No, I'm not jealous of you. Screw you. I I'm saying there are things about you that I wish I could have. You're describing jealousy. But I just cast no, my how eyes did you do that. that? Earlier, we saw the expression to cast a spell. Here, we have another common use of the verb to cast. When you cast your eyes over something, you read it or look at it quickly. Another expression with a similar meaning is to look something over. Oh, hey, Captain. Did you get my report on the Finley murder? Uh, yeah, I looked it over. Nice work. Our world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, including me. Everyone? Uh, can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works, and it's very difficult and dangerous to change it mid-casting. 
So my girlfriend's just gonna forget about everything we've been through? I mean, is she even gonna be my girlfriend? That depends. Was she your girlfriend just because you're Spider-Man, or...? I mean, I don't know. I really hope not. All right, fine. Everyone in the world's gonna forget that you're Spider-Man, except your girlfriend. Thank you so much, Ned. Oh my god, Ned. Ned! What is a Ned? He's my best friend, so it's really important to me that Ned knows... Okay, let's not change the parameters of this spell anymore while I'm casting Okay, I'm done, it. I'm done. I, I swear I'm done, I'm done. Nah, but my Aunt May should really know. Peter, stop tampering with the spell. In this clip, Doctor Strange is telling Peter not to cast the spell, say the spell, interfere with the spell. When she found out that I was Spider-Man, it was, it was really messy, and I don't think that I could go through with that again. So the, the Avengers, this is your first time in one of these movies, right? In a big collective movie like yes. this, yeah, the big ensemble. And how was it for you? It was weird. I mean, fantastic, daunting. You know, my first day on set was with two icons, with Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr., and that's kind of unnerving. Mm -hmm. When a situation is unnerving, it makes you feel angry and mad, surprised and shocked, less confident and slightly frightened. Especially because this character has to sort of stand, you know, beard to beard with another egotistical narcissist in the MCU. And uh, I have a similar status in the story. So that was a, a weird thing to pull out of a hat on the first day on set with Robert, but he's, he's fantastic, as you know. And Did very, you know very, anything he's... about- Writers and producers can be so, they never say what is going to happen in the movie. Secrecy, secretly, secretive. Writers and producers can be so secretive, they never say what is going to happen in the movie. They're so secretive though. Did you know anything about the script? I did, as has been much talked about, and uh, I think, you know, yeah, it's slightly, it's in, it invoked a bit of jealousy. I did read the script, yeah, I did. How is that possible? You're, this is your first- I just took no the one pages else got a script. and I don't have glasses yet, but I just cast no, my eyes No, how did you do them. that? Um, I, read, I read words. Now, what if I told you that you can learn 1,000 or more words in English with just one simple trick? You heard me right. This is a concept that can dramatically improve your vocabulary and make you sound more advanced. Are you curious? Then check out this lesson next. Let's watch a clip. I love my grandma. She has a lot of wisdom, but is forgetful sometimes. She believes in the importance of spending time with family because it strengthens our relationship. She always speaks politely to people. Pretty cool, isn't it? Well, in today's lesson, you are going to learn how you can use this one trick to sound more advanced when you speak English. But first, let's quickly understand what word formation is. Word formation basically has to do with the forming of new words with the words that you already know. 